Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about another medium level problem from lead code. The problem name is find beautiful indices in a given array one. So let us talk about the problem statement first. So you are given a zero index string S, a string A, a string B, and an integer K. So as you can see, you are given four inputs, S, A, B, and K. Okay. Now a string I is beautiful. I'm oh, sorry. An index I is called beautiful. So I have to find out beautiful indices I such that I is between zero and S minus length minus A. Okay, just first forget about this condition. Think that I is between certain range. Okay, I'm trying to tell you how you can read out these conditions as well so that you don't get confused in the contest or how we will read out these conditions. So I is somewhat between a range. I have to somehow choose I between the range. So I is between zero till S dot length. So it has to be in between this length. Okay, it has to subtract something also, but let's assume that I has to be between any index in this string S. Okay, such that if you take out this substring from I till this, okay, it should be equal to A. Okay, pretty much simple. So, which means that I have to somewhat find out any index in S such that we have this A string as a substring there because it should occur there. So, as you can see, MI, okay, I find out my here. So, which means that this can be a possible candidate for a beautiful index, but there are more conditions. You have to find out that, okay, I exist, but there also exists an index J such that, okay, okay. So which means that there should also exist an index J such that B should also be a substring. So, okay. So as you can see, I find a squirrel here. So this can be a possible candidate for J and J minus I should be less than equal to K. So the difference between I minus J should be less than equal to K. This is the okay. Okay. So the thing is that you have to find out multiple occurrences of I and J this, how many times this a and B occurs in this string. You have to first find out that and then find out the pairs of I and J such that the difference between them is less than equal to K. So our overall target is somehow first we have to find out all the occurrence of A in this string and all the occurrence of B string in this string as substrings. Then we just have to find out possible pairs such that it is less than equal to K. So pretty much simple. Now, how can you find out all the occurrences of this string? Now there are multiple algorithms and you can do it in a very brute force way as well. How? Because the Constraints are pretty much small as well in this portal problem. As you can see, the constraints are pretty much small only. But why not use an STL function? Because there are multiple STL functions for strings as well to find out the substring of a particular string is present or not. So you can just Google it out. You can just like in context, don't think about it. If you got some approach, you can also like check it out any other approach. So there's an STL function, okay, to find out what is the position of a particular string if it's present or not. Okay, and we'll keep on finding out. Uh, all the occurrence using that SCL function. So the find function is used to find out that. Okay, you can directly just like like do it out. It, it's pretty much simple. So you just have to find out all the occurrence and then just form pair. So uh, nothing much complicated here itself. If you just find out the crux, what you're trying to achieve and the actual thing, what you'll actually try to do, I just Google it out or like you can find out problems. I just do the first Google and I just find it out. Okay, so what's the complete approach now? Let's move on to code part now. So what we have done is that we have to first find out all the occurrences of A and B in string S. So we'll use this actual function find index and uh, pass out the string S, find out this uh, string that we have to find out as a substring, which is this. And we have to find out all these occurrences. So we'll store that in some vector, which is like X and Y for A and B itself. Okay, so we'll call this function same function again. Now what this function is, it will first find out the occurrence of A, like whatever this string is in this str string starting from index zero. Okay, this is the starting index. It will first find out if it doesn't able to find it out, then return because we are not able to find it out. If it is able to find it out, then what we'll do, whatever it is able to find it out, I will push that particular position in some array. And then I will start finding out more positions. So I will make my position equal to find it out more from position plus one because I find it out till position because we have find it out one uh, occurrence till position. So I have to now find it more position, position plus one, because I find out till position. Okay. So I will do a while loop over that and it will keep on finding out the positions. So this particular function will find out all the positions at which a string A is present inside the string S, uh, string str. And it will return that particular all the position in the vector ARR. Now in the end, I have to form pairs of ij. So I will iterate over, do a this literally a double O of n square for loop over both of these arrays and find out that for every I, because I can only be a possible candidate to be a beautiful index. So for every I, 
whether there exists another index J in the array, which I funded for B, such that the absolute difference between I and J should be less than equal to K. If it is present, then push all of those indexes from I, which are possibly beautiful, push that inside a new array, or vector you can say, and uh, then break out. Because why I have to break out? Because I can I should not take multiple occurrences. I just have to form one pair. Okay, for every I, whether there exists another pair in J. Okay, and then we should break out. If we not break out, then it can multiply occur multiple things, but we don't want that. And then we just return the answer. Okay, so that's a complete logic for this particular problem. If you still have any doubts, you can mention on in the comment box of this particular video. I hope you understand it clearly. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Till coding and bye.